So I'm going to attempt to answer a question I saw in the comments um, on the C sharp static members section. Uh, this is relating to I think Connor's question about when to use static as opposed to uh, when not to use static. And I think I can understand, and to be honest, even when I was going through this was a little confusing, um, but I think there's the best way to think about this is actually to take a step back uh, and, and first talk about static classes versus non-static classes. And the easy way to kind of think of it at a, at a very high level is static is used when you're not going to create an instance of a class but instead you just want to have some access to some functions or abilities directly from the class um, without taking creating an instance of it so you only really need it once um, so let's make an example I think it's easiest to see through an example so let's make a full public class uh, public static class and we'll say uh, comeback. Now we'll call them sassy. Sassy. And we'll make within this sassy class a uh, we'll make a public uh, static void uh, yo mama. And inside your mama, we will pass string A, string B. And all we're going to have to have it do is console.write line. And we'll say A. Has a better mama. I'm not going to go too bad here. <laughs> a has a better mama than B. And you can come up with m much better your mama jokes. Um, and within the program, let's see if this runs to make sure I didn't make any obvious mistakes right now. So it seems to compile. And what we can do is instead of creating an instance of the sassy class um, we can access it directly from the main part of our program so instead of saying uh, sassy Tom equals new sassy or something like that we would say just um, we could access it directly. We could say sassy dot yo mama and pass it a uh, Bob has a better mama than Jim. Okay, so that's a static class. Now let's compare that to a normal class. So let's make a our person class I like to come back to. And we can go from there. So we'll say class person. And within this person class, we'll uh, say uh, public uh, int age get set don't make that capital let's say with convention let's see if we made it oh we need to see my no that's right all right and then we could say Tom uh, person Tom equals new person 
and then tom dot age equals thirty console dot right line tom dot age and if this will run Hopefully we'll get an output. So this is this is a good example. What we've done is we have a public static class, Sassy. Because it's static, we don't create an instance of that class. We access it directly. We say sassy.yomama. So we're able to access this uh, method directly from the main part of our program versus a non-static class which is something like person um, in which you can create not only uh, one instance but as many instances of as it as you want so I could also say person Brian equals new person and Brian dot age could be a uh, hundred and we could write that to the console as well So this works fine, but if I was to do what I mentioned earlier and try to say um, sassy uh, first, uh, we'll say Lisa equals new sassy, we should get an error. when it finally runs. And this says you cannot uh, declare a variable of static type um, and you cannot create an instance of the static class solo sassy. So that's like the high level difference. Static, you're not creating instances of and uh, non-static, you can. So let's go take this and go back to the example that was on here. Um, and if you look at this class, uh, the math class, the they're saying const int one, and because uh, the property one um, is just basically a static member, um, it's going to be. Uh, able to be accessed directly from the main program. So instead of creating an instance of this math class, they're able to create um, or, or access it directly from the main part of the program like we did uh, here. We access SASE from the main part of the program directly in the same way because um, const is a static method, or not a static method, but it's essentially uh, static by default, you're able to do the same thing. Um, and then they move this down to uh, static constructors. Now this example is a little odd to me uh, because it doesn't really make sense why you would have something um, like this intuitively uh, just looking at it. But it, it's the same type of example. And this is saying we have a class and the class is actually non-static so I believe you would be able to create an instance of this class but within that instance um, you're not really getting anything because all of the uh, methods inside are static and the properties are static um, and is using a static constructor so what would that look like? Well, why don't we play with it for a second? I think that will make it a little bit clearer. So if we run this code, we can see that um, from the main part of the program, 
we are accessing this class uh, method or actually this property directly and so in the same way we could say we could write this directly but because it's static it's um, related to the class there's only like one version of this but because this class is non-static you could also have things that are um, related to this sum class so we could say public age uh, public int age like we did and give it a get and a set and now we have a, a public property and we have these static properties and so what we can do is we can create an instance of this class and we'll say um, foo some class foo equals new some class and just want to make sure I don't have any errors real quick So no errors, and then we could say, in this instance of uh, foo, of which is of the type sum class, we could assign its age. So foo dot age equals twenty five. course we'd have to output it and then we could create another instance of the sum class we could say sum class bar equals new sum class bar dot age equals 30 so what we have now is two instances of our sum class and each instance of the sum class has its own version of the property age. So foo can have its own age, bar can have its own age, um, but there's also a two static properties that relate to the class in general. So I can't say something like foo dot um, x equals 25 or equals I don't know 1000 because X is related to the class and it, it is static so if I wanted to access that directly I would have to say some class some class dot X equals a thousand so let's comment this out for a sec and we'll say foo.x equals a thousand and see what it says cannot be accessed with an instance reference um, you just can't do that but if I was to say some class dot x equals a thousand that works no problem and because we wrote the value of it um, we can see it, it actually got changed down here and a static constructor just initializes the values uh, like a normal constructor would but instead of being related to the instances of the class that are being created it's just initializing these static properties that again are tied just to the, the the sum class. So I, I know I've been summarizing a lot, but just to, to reiterate one last time, the static uh, properties or methods are related to the instance, uh, not the instance, <laughs> the static properties 
or methods are related to the class itself, you access them directly. They're not, you can't create instances of the class and change those. Those are almost like globally related to the class. And then you can have non-static properties or variables or methods, and these are created and you can change and modify and, and play with for each instance of the class. And that's what we did with this foo.age. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, it, it should help provide uh, maybe some additional details of how it works. Um, but static can be pretty useful. And if you think about it, uh, there it, it makes sense that you would want to have some methods and, and things that you don't need to create additional instances of. Uh, I think a good example uh, that's used a lot is like math classes, where I don't need to create an instance of doing a power operation, like two to the power of four, but I could create a method that takes in two numbers and does two to the power of four uh, in a math class and then I could say, uh, you know, math.pow uh, 2 to the power of 4. And that's useful because I'm, it's, I'm accessing the static method of pow that's part of this math class. I wouldn't want to create an instance of the math class to try to access this, this method. It, it's just some a useful method that it's uh, that's static that I can access directly. So hopefully that helps a bit. Um, let me know if you have any additional